Today I want to talk to you about pain. And I'm not just talking about like a scratch on the arm or maybe you just broke a tooth. I mean anus pain, right? That's probably the worst type of pain in the world. And 10 out of 10 women that I've surveyed in my office, I said, would you rather have a hemorrhoidectomy surgery again? Or would you rather have another baby? And all of them have said, I would rather have quadruplets rather than go through that painful surgery ever again. And that says something to me. I mean, most people say that breaking your femur, you know, your leg is probably the most painful experience. But I think having pain in your anus might be above that actually it's just no one wants to talk about it right hi there i'm dr over chung and i'm your friendly proctologist thank you so much for being here and it's because of you we have this community we can hang out we can talk about real problems that happen to real people today i want to talk to you about my pain routine or regimen for patients that have surgery with me and let's pick the hemorrhoid surgery let's pick the king of all painful surgeries. And we're gonna to talk today in this video about my pain pill regimen. What do I do for that? Pain is very, very important to treat and address it up front, in my opinion. There are many consequences of pain when you have it in your anus. For example, one is anal spasm, okay? This is where the anus freaks out because something terrible has just ravaged the butthole and the muscles want to close down to protect themselves and you from anything ever bothering it ever again it says it don't want to fart nothing's getting in nothing's getting out oh my god we are in code red situation we need to be left alone but we know that that's not good behavior that's not going to work for very long because we're going to be eating at some point and we've got to poop. But that's what creates constipation when you need to poop. It, you have to push harder because the muscles are squeezing harder. You can't fart. Gassiness occurs. And of course, needing to go to the bathroom all the time and feeling you need to go all the time. That is another symptom of that anal spasm. Another huge problem with pain is that it really destroys or really challenges our mindset, our motivation, our will to get through the recovery. Yeah, that when that light at the end of the tunnel, at the end of this race of the recovery goes dark, whew, really, really tough, right? I mean, the pain that you're having 24-7, like 50 out of 10 pain just rocking your brain and your anus. And all of a sudden, that glimmer of hope just goes out like a light, light bulb or like a candle. Oof, very rough. People go into depression the anxiety goes straight through the roof and you know things like chronic pain things like chronic anal spasm and pelvic floor spasm those things are very real consequences so in my opinion my belief is that if you treat the pain early on and you don't let the patient get to those terrible stressful levels which is what pain is it's a form of terrible stress okay then the patient can recover much better get through on the other side they will get off the pain medications you know and, and you'll see that i see it all the time and surgeons doctors in general are very afraid of prescribing pain medications for hemorrhoid surgery let's just talk about surgeons yeah forget the other doctors because they don't do surgery for hemorrhoids number one thing is there's tons of lawsuits for um over prescribing medications um people overdosing and lots of bad things happening right addiction of course and the thing is that has really overshadowed and played some really bad press and made it a huge disadvantage for those who really, really need it. And those, if you had a hemorrhoid surgery, oh man, do you need it. I know I'm going to want it, okay? I will demand pain medication for myself. So if you're going to also go through the same thing, yeah, you're a human just like me. I highly advise treating pain. So let's talk about the pain medication. I use prescription strength medications um two out of two out of the three okay of course my pain regimen for surgery is has involved injections plus pain pills and coaching but we're going to talk about just the medications today first medication that i always prescribe is oxycodone okay oxycodone is a narcotic it's an opiate derivative right that plant poppy seed and this 
drug has so much negative press about addiction problems and everything. But it's the one medication that I depend on, which will control people's pain, like really bring the pain level down and keep it down. No other pain medication comes close, not even close. I'm not even trying, I'm not pulling your leg. This is pure experience. Even if patients get a lot of side effects like dizziness from it, it still controls their pain more than any other drug. Another version of oxycodone is called Percocet. And Percocet is a combination of Tylenol and the oxycodone together mixed in one pill. And why do they do that? It's because they don't want people to overdose on the oxycodone. Because Tylenol, if you take too much of that, usually more than 4,000 milligrams in a 24-hour period, your liver can go into liver failure and you're going to get really ill, feel bad, and go to the ER. People die from liver toxicity from Tylenol. So that's why they put it there so that when you feel ill, you kind of have to wean, you have to stop taking the oxycodone. This oxycodone pill is something as what I instruct my patients to take on a scheduled basis, okay? What that means is every four hours, they're taking a pain pill. And I know the current thing in the out there in the internet everywhere in the world is you don't take more than you need. You should only take pain medication when it's super painful. Or you're, you're not able to handle it. I'm sorry. I think that's wrong. Okay. In this context with hemorrhoid surgery, if you wait for the pain to get worse, the pain actually keeps climbing. That's something that's very unique in terms of hemorrhoid surgery recovery. So let's talk about this. So let's go through an example here, okay? So let's say you're day two from your surgery and you're sitting at home and you're trying to think like, okay, when should I take that pain medication? Let's see how long I can last. And so you took your last pain pill maybe five hours ago. So you're hanging around like a four out of 10 maximum pain, right? And you think, oh yeah, it's, it's, oh yeah, it's pretty spicy down there, but I think I can hold out just a little bit longer. So you wait and you wait. Now it's five out of 10. Okay. Now it's going up to six. And then you're on the next hour and it's like, ooh, 6.5. Like, ooh, that's spicy. I think I need to take a pain medication. So you take a pain medication, but the first thing that's got to happen is that the medication takes time to absorb and kick in. So by the time that's happening, you're going to see that the hemorrhoid pain starts to really ramp up dang quickly, like before the blink of an eye. And so by the time it kicks in, about a half hour to an hour later, you might be at a 7.5. And now you're thinking, holy shoot, that, that I'm, I'm feeling, I'm feeling the effects of the medication, but man, my pain is still going up. Like, what the hell? You know, I don't think that pain, one pain medication was enough. The bottle says you can take two pills every four hours. So you decide to take another one, but that takes another hour to kick in. So now you're waiting another hour and now you're at an eight, maybe 8.5. You're like, oh my God, how the heck, what the heck? Why isn't this pain medication working? And I'll tell you why. It's because the anxiety and the stress from the pain and the fact that the pain medication isn't being delivered fast enough into your system, it's allowing the pain to climb up and you're too late. Now the pain is raging and now you're at the maximum of the pill level on the bottle and you're like, oh shoot, what the hell do I do? So now you're frantically calling the doctor's office. Oh, do they answer it? No. Oh, can you give me a refill? Can you give me instructions? No, doctor will call you in about 24 hours. Um, if it's an emergency, I guess you're going to have to go to the ER. Or you can just take a sits bath, you know? And so you're just like, what, WTF? Like, what the heck do I do? So that is a situation that is a nightmare where people are on the bathroom floor, like curled up in the ball, crying, paralyzed in their beds, crying because they cannot do anything. The pain medication doesn't seem to be working. And you can see what's happening mentally as well as physically. Just can't seem to catch up. And it takes a hell of a lot of pain medication sometimes to get that pain to get control again. So what I do with my patients is that it's a regular scheduled lower dose, okay? It's constantly being fed into this into your system instead of these huge like mountains of pain medication that you have to take in order to get a really high pain level down. So you're like just gulping down these pain medications like pills after pills, tons of pills to try and get the pain when your pain is bad, 
Whereas you can just be otherwise just keeping steady. And I think that keeping steady, it's shown in my experience to create a much happier and much more successful experience. The second pain medication that I give is tramadol. And for people that can't tolerate oxycodone very well, maybe the side effects are really bad, like dizziness, nausea, they can't take it. Or the pain medication doesn't seem to work for the pain. Then they, I switch them over to tramadol. And tramadol is a prescription pain medication. It works similar in action to the narcotic pills, but it's not a narcotic. So it's a different class of drugs. So I don't, I'm not trying to load people up on tons of narcotics. We want to use different medications for different strategies. And some people, tramadol works excellent, although a very minority of people. But we find out through the recovery. But one thing is interesting is that tramadol and oxycodone together really work well to control pain. They kind of have a synergy and they really, instead of, you know, more than by themselves with pain control, together they do a much better job. And so when pain is really soaring high for some people and the oxycodone by itself doesn't work, I will always try next to combine it with tramadol in order to get pain control down. The third pain medication pill I will always advise people to take is simple ibuprofen. Now, ibuprofen works excellent to control pain, way better than Tylenol. In fact, many people have told me, and even from my personal experience, that Tylenol sucks. It doesn't touch anything. It's like you you know, had a few sugar pills. And that's the reason why I, tell, I don't even tell people to take Tylenol. I just said, don't even bother with it. Just leave it alone. Okay, so now you're thinking like, oh yeah, Dr. Chung, you're a super nice guy. Nice guy for prescribing such great pain medication. But you know what? You're also very dangerous, Dr. Chung. You are prescribing these very powerful prescription medications. You might kill somebody with those. And number two, you might be creating drug addicts with this. I mean, this is this is crazy. What are you doing to people? And you know what? Those points are very, very well taken, okay? But what do I do to combat combat that? Because I believe in controlling pain medication, but to allow somebody to hurt themselves, I don't want that either. So the way I combat that is I am constant communication with my patients, okay? My patients have access to me 24-7, but I am checking in on them at least twice a day. So I want to make sure that the side effects are controlled in the pain medication. I want to make sure that they're not taking too much we are monitoring. I am monitoring them all the time. You know, we want to make sure we have a constant communication back and forth. How is that working? We tried this. How did that work for you? Should we take less? Should we take more? Does Maybe we need to change the medication, okay? This is constantly happening in real time, okay, within hours of each other. If you think about a typical doctor's experience, they'll tell you to do something and won't talk to you for another 24 or 48 hours. If you give a patient all these medications, very high risk for something bad to happen, okay? And so I cannot do that. The only way I can prescribe these good medications and control people's pain is I have to watch them, have to talk to them, and we've got to work together. Now, let me address the question about the drug addiction. The period of time that you are on these medications is actually very short. And what's more is that the beginning is where you're taking the most amount of pain medication. Obviously, because the pain is so strong. But as time goes on, you are gradually weaning yourself off of the program, right? You're not taking like four pills of pain, four pain pills every single hour for four weeks straight. No, you're taking maybe four pain pills in the beginning gradually coming off them as the weeks go by. And then before you know it, you're taking barely anything at all. And this, again, part of the coaching, part of the learning, our understanding how your body uses the pain medication and how it's helpful for you. So I present this all to you to give you an insider look and a doctor's perspective on how I control pain and how I've been successful with it. My goal for treating pain is to keep pain five out of 10 or less at all times, okay? Of course, you may have a spike up when you poop, but to get it back down as quickly as possible, five or less, that's the goal there. And you can compare with notes with your surgeon. You know, you should, you deserve to have a good hemorrhoid surgery recovery. 
You know, there's no reason why you shouldn't be able to suggest to your doctor, hey, can we do this? I heard about that. Because patients do that to me too, okay? They say, hey, I heard about this. They're doing that. What do you think about that, Dr. Chen? Will that help me? Can you do something like that? And I have these discussions all the time, okay? And to me, it doesn't offend me. I'm not hurt by it. In my opinion, if somebody's doing something new and different, I'll think about it. And then maybe I may try it for that person and integrate that into my plan. My pain strategy is always changing all the time. It's no, it's definitely nowhere near the same when I was in training. And even a year ago, my plan is different. And is always, I'm always trying to improve it and make it better, learning all the time. I don't have that many gray hairs yet, so I've got a lot of years to go and to try and make this a good experience as possible. Because there's no way to get away from pain when you're working on the anus. So I hope this video was helpful for you. Definitely let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. And I appreciate you. Subscribe and like. Thank you. Bye-bye.